So the beginning of uh, June, the first turn, I started with the Germans, but for the Brits, it's kind of a nightmare turn. They get a stack this big and a stack almost as big as being withdrawn. Well, not really. Uh, something like five cav units are withdrawn. Well, a couple of them I found. They're my Indian cav. But all the regular English cav is already gone. And in fact, one of the units that's supposed to be coming in is this one, which is already on the board. I don't think I screwed up with these things. I don't think that I withdrew these and didn't bring them in when I should have or something, but who knows. Um, I try to look through this and see, and I don't know, maybe I jumped ahead, maybe something happened, who knows, but I can't find, uh, certainly the situation, I, I mean, I didn't look, obviously, to see, it's looking like I probably screwed up. I'm not seeing calf here, but it's hard to tell. Uh, unless it happened earlier. For whatever reason, they're off the board. I don't know why I took them off. I don't know why they're gone. But I don't know what to do. I'm just going to kind of say, well, some of them were withdrawn properly. Some of them not. This is already in. I can't figure this out. So the hell with it. I'm just going to go with it as it is. Uh... I may charge the Brits some replacement points to try to make up for it, but I, I have no idea what happened. And that, you know, it's easy to skip to the wrong year. Maybe I saw this, but I don't think so. I would have seen all this and said, well, where are all those guys? They don't exist. I would put them in. So I don't know how those got withdrawn. Uh, maybe there's a French withdrawal somewhere of Cav, and I did that by accident, and the French Cav doesn't belong on the board. You know, with all the different paging back and forth and trying to do that, it's bound to cause real inaccuracies. One's far, far greater than, at least in this player, this case, than uh, not treating the individual units as individual units. Uh, the little tricky stuff and annoying stuff that you have to do to maintain that facade. Well, <laughs> this replacement chart brings far more in, at least in the case of someone like me, who is liable to not get everything absolutely rote perfect, no matter what I do, right? And it's impossible to trace it back when there's a screw up. It just, I, I have no idea what happened. So, there we go again. So as we pass through uh, June, we're not very far in, uh, just a couple turns in, but not much is happening. It still takes a little bit of effort, but not much. Um, I'm looking at the, the track for this turn, and yes, some Germans are coming in. In terms of supply, the Allies just don't really feel the need to attack. In terms of one thing they do, though, the British once again have to launch an attack to get some of their Canadians killed. Uh, it's always the Canadians and the Australians because they have very limited replacement counters for them. So they have to get them bloodied regularly, which is fine because they actually kind of need to, well, they kind of want to maybe recharge some of their other units and they have to get them damaged to do that too, i.e. waste some of their other replacements. So the Brits have this desire to lose men. Uh, that's that's really what drives them in this, in this game. Um, just so that they don't waste them, because they'll be inflicting casualties on the Germans as well. And presumably more, because they actually have a fairly powerful little force here. Plus, if they do things right, they can throw the French artillery into this and really, uh, you know, get a significant amount of damage compared to what their risk is, uh, even if they're not going to gain any territory. Just purely attritional fighting. But one thing to look forward to this huge stack of units coming here. This is the upgrades of the French Cav now. Uh, it looks like there's a lot coming, so I'm kind of like, well, I'll have a lot more pieces. And it's true in a sense. I will have pieces that can defend the frontiers a little better. The Cav is great for putting in the Vosges where it's hard to get supply. That makes no sense at all, but, you know, <laughs> whatever. Um, they're good there because you don't have to supply Cav to have it at full strength. So... It's sometimes tricky. Right now I'm in good shape. The Germans could really use some cav down there for whatever reason. Just one of those little odd things in the game. All right, onward. Well, as uh, I've been musing about, I'm going to try to set up an artillery barrage 
on Paris. If I can get rid of that fort, that weakens the French line a little bit. It's a low cost uh, exercise, although it may be a high cost in terms of response because there are French artillery there, but I'm trying to mass my artillery now. Because of the loss of Luxembourg, the whole of, uh, German realm net is running up this way, and I had a lot of guns down here. So it's gonna take me another month to get into place at least. It may take, an, actually, or not a month, another uh, four days to get into place at least. Uh, but I should be able to burn enough supply this month to make the game happy. I did want to talk about one other thing, which is the, uh, the amount of Germans being withdrawn at this point in the game is painful. Uh, not in terms of mechanical aspects, just in terms of the strategic side of the game. Um, the Germans are really beginning to see their lines weakening at a point when they have too much supply, which is one of the reasons for deciding this. I got all my units built pretty much. Well, there's this mountain unit I can build. But and most of my replacements are being funneled in, uh, have already been uh, spent in, in terms of most of the units have been recovered. That's a mechanical difficulty, finding the units. But uh, it's difficult to launch an attack without significantly weakening somewhere on the line, which is why I'm going with the artillery only option, even though I'm going to lose some artillery. Artillery is not as important for defense. Um, it's got its costs, but I should be able to do more damage than I take because I can mass mine against one hex. So the English are in one of their situations where they've got too many Commonwealth units at full strength. They've got to get them damaged so that they can drain some of their reserves, so that they can get more reserves in play. So they made an attack here. It didn't turn out well, even though they had tremendous odds. The biggest I think I've seen, I'm not sure, but they were up to, uh, I think I hit over 100. And 70 before. This time they were at 162, so one of the bigger attacks we've seen here. But they were facing a big German stack. No way they can push it. With the minus two, a bad die roll, they ended up only doing 10 to the Germans. The Germans did 11 to them. Not a good trade off, but it had to be done. Uh, uh, it's kind of tough to make an offensive at this point, it's tough to decide that you want to especially with German troops constantly leaving the front. It's kind of like, well, it'll get a little weaker. <laughs> okay, so the Germans began launching uh, their artillery bombardment against Paris. Uh, good good return on their, their investment. They did seven points to four. doesn't sound like much, but it's actually doubled 14 to eight because of the demoralization point cost of losing the more valuable artillery. Plus, they're driving away the French artillery. The French are going to have to start rebuilding that stuff. Uh, of course, they have plenty of extra manpower, but so do the Germans in their own sense. They have uh, extra replacement points. They're just running out of troops, uh, the, the, the actual uh, formations that they need, which is kind of a weird kind of situation. Are those replacement troops indicating actual troops? or just the supplies for them. What's going on with them? It's kind of hard to see because the game doesn't distinguish between the manpower involved and uh, the weapons supplies in the same way that many other systems really uh, at the strategic level would. But it does give you the opportunity to build those things up in a way that uh, at least you have some ability to control what you're putting on the ground. All right. Let's start with the Allies. Well, another annoying traversal of this uh, order of battle or whatever. Turns out there's a requirement on this turn to remove 435 infantry divisions listed as such. Now, there are none. Uh, there are no counters like that. There are a bunch. What I did find was 135 after going through all my counters. I had. There are a bunch of five fives. Well, I've been kind of, uh, you know, good in terms of, hey, restoring my units, keeping them up to strength. Uh, sometimes it's easier to keep a smaller unit because you can pull it out. It's weaker. Uh, it doesn't disrupt your line as much. Beef that up, push it back in. So they tend to be at full strength, actually, uh, fairly often. Well, 
searching through all my counters a second time. Yeah, this took about 20 minutes. I found one. Then I went through a third time to try to find some five fives to remove, which are ending up getting removed. This brigade, God knows where it came from. I pulled it off looking for the strength points. So now I'm bringing it back in as a reinforcement. Yeah, that's realistic. Um, you know, again, look, I don't know what kind of level of detail and, uh, you know, attention to that detail that this game could possibly be more realistic for. But if you think about trying to hunt these suckers down uh, and you think trying to plan ahead for their withdrawal by pulling them back and kind of making sure they don't have enough strength points. You know, I'm losing six strength points from the Germans because of this. They can't really afford that, but c'est la vie. But again, you know, what it comes down to is too often you're going to make really bad decisions based on withdrawals that may be were actually made for reasonable reasons, like, oh, that's a beat-up unit. We can pull it out, reforge it, and send it to the east front or west or whatever. But the, the strictures of this uh, set uh, obliterate all that, and they end up saying simply, yeah, you're going to remove these units, whether that makes sense under your current situation. Again, I think some of these choices are actually decrease. In addition to decreasing because you can't pay attention to what's going on enough, but they decrease your ability uh, to get uh, a fair simulation of what was going on. You're doing stuff that you're just saying, ah, oh, this is stupid, man. I would not be pulling... I wouldn't have recuperated those units in the last couple turns if I knew. But no way you can be aware enough of this to really play... Oh, no way I can. Maybe some people are able to handle everything perfectly there. Uh, maybe you could spend the extra, you know, on the five-minute turns that most turns are, the extra 20 minutes looking ahead each turn to figure out oh, wait, no, I don't want to do this. I don't want to recuperate these guys because I'll have to withdraw them in two months. That's not the thinking that was in place at the command level. The thinking was, let's get these units as a cadre, and picking those particular units just doesn't necessarily make sense. I, It's just irritating. So we roll to the end of June of 1916, and the Germans have been playing this out, this artillery barrage, and duel. Great way to burn their uh, supply points and wreck French artillery. The French keep shoving their artillery in there. That's the only way they can protect the fortress. Uh, the French don't mind too much, but they are taking m much higher losses than the Germans are just because of the number of hexes that the Germans have on, against Paris. Uh, so that's a, a cost that they'd rather not be paying. But the alternative, of course, is to take, is, is to uh, deliver no losses to the Germans and just lose the fortification, which might be cheaper in the long run, but that or in the short run. But then, what happens in the long run? Does it mean that this hex essentially falls? And if that falls, then we begin the bombardment on this hex. And if that falls, we begin the bombardment on this hex. And there's huge demoralization penalties to losing Paris. So keeping up that counter-battery fire seemed important enough that the French have been shifting their artillery in and spending all their resources building up uh, the damaged artillery. I'm not actually at the end of the turn. I notice I, I haven't uh, uh, positioned... I could have built some more artillery, I think, uh, because the German... I started the French turn before the German turn or something. I don't know. Anyway, and I also have this unit to put. But I'm going to load this one up at this point because nothing of interest. Is we're just looking at bookkeeping and then me shuffling, uh, trying to set up whatever's going on next month, uh, which is July of 16. It looks like there's a lot of activity, probably units being pulled in and out. I see uh, both French, uh, I see French, English, and German withdrawals in play, so that's going to be kind of a headache to do. All right, up this one goes.